one after one come and go but i stand like that jagat jagat aata hai jata hai but i remain like that creator is like that creation comes and goes that is success my thore my thore saina this wonderful lord this beautiful lord the lord who is a changing rose sometimes he looks dark sometimes he looks fair sometimes he looks soft sometimes he looks hard sometimes he looks short sometimes he looks tall sometimes he is the father sometimes he is the mother mai dhure mai dhure sai dhyan jab us bhagwan ko manga hai to bin bole wo aapki jholi bhar deta hai आपकी झोली में शायद समाने की जगह नहीं है इतना आशीर्वाद भर देता है तो यह एक एक्सपीरियंस है यह एक अनुभव है जो हर एक व्यक्ति को अपने जीवन में अनुभव करे बगैर इसका ज्ञान नहीं हो सकता स्वामी एड्रेस ये सिंपली मूव फ्रॉम यजुर मंदिर इंटू हृदय मंदिर बिकॉज दैट इज वेर वी आर वी आर ट्राइंग टू टेल इन दैट the no, dil khol dekho ye mera and you will find only that and i think that is what we need to hold on to that is our true source that is the destination that we need to go back to my thore my thore sai bodh what is the meaning of go within go within meaning withdraw your mind which is projecting outside take it back so I pray to Swami that the speaker be forgotten. The speaker is irrelevant. What be remembered is only this fascinating Lord. Let us take this. opportunity to thank swami for his advent let us this is opportunity to express our gratitude to swami with a prayerful mood my friends let me start this this way swami is not a person baba is a phenomenon when we think that is a person there is nothing like there is nothing like thinking of him in a physical form here he is not a person he is a phenomenon that's the reason why you'll be able to feel him anywhere any time bhagwan is an object is not an object to be possessed no he is the subject so we should have subjective approach to bhagwan but not objective approach well let me say these things with all my sincerity and long be experienced over 45 years or so in the organization really speaking it's rather amazing surprising to me how i spent all these 45 years with swami i'm not able to believe it to have happened because time is god god is time as time in his is in his hands it just flew like that like a flash i don't feel that long four and a half decades of time no why i believe that we are all here because we are chosen by him we are not here because of our option he chose us why he chooses is best known to him but anyway we find people from different schools of philosophy or different faiths coming to swami for instance vike gokak is from arabindo kasturi ji is from ramkrishna mission 
Dr. Hisla, a Christian, Charles Penn, a Christian. And we have met so many devotees from Japan who are all Buddhists. How they are all here, how they accepted Bhagavan is a miracle of miracles. But one thing is this, all these stalwarts experiences Swami in their own chosen way. They have not been converted. They have not accepted any philosophy, anything new ideology. They could realize the ancient objectives of the path which they have been treading all along their lifetime. In fact, Kasturiji used to say he finds his fulfillment after coming to Swan. That really happens, yes. Like this, my friends, I am from Brahma Samaj background. We don't believe in God with a form and a name. But I find myself here from Baba. Yes, from Brahma Samaj to Baba. And one Swami remarked like this, Anil Kumar, where were you before coming here? What is the path that you follow? I said, Swami, I'm a Brahmo. Oh, you're a Brahmo? Yes. For three generations, Swami, we are affiliated to Brahma Samaj, founded by Raja Ramon Roy from West Bengal. Please note this remark of Swami. Brahma Samaj, from Samaj, the society, you have come to Brahma here, that is Brahma Samaj. You see, I have not heard that kind of definition. From Samaj, the community, to Brahma, to the divinity. It's a really wonderful statement. And the way, how I appreciate his talks, and most of these talks speak of the Brahma philosophy in depth. All its profundity, the nameless, formless, attributeless divinity. That's the more he makes references to those basic points of Brahma philosophy that has drawn me close and closer to him. But my friends, it is also equally painful to let you know that I had six years of probation. He never looked at me for six long years. Leave alone first row. I didn't get even tenth row. I was also getting, I was always getting thirtieth row, fortieth row, back bench. I never had any front rows. I never had any kind of Padra Muskar or any interview. No occasion to offer a flower to him. No chance to touch his feet for six long years. A very long period of probation indeed. In government service, at the most you have only two years of probation. But in respect of Anil Kumar, his spiritual service is confirmed after six years of probation. Maybe Bhagwan has taken six years to break the hard stone of my faith that has been deeply rooted in Brahma Sumaj philosophy. It was so difficult to accept Swami. But anyway, by and by, as years passed, well, he has become my life. When certain moments when I could not bear certain pressures and certain unfortunate developments over here, when I felt like going back, my mother said, you cannot live leaving Baba. You may say a thousand things about people. You may tell me all the difficulties, but I can tell you, you cannot live without him. Her statements are not only prophetic, but they are literally true. Literally. Because whenever I used to go for any short vacation to my native place, I was always thinking, this is the time for Swami's darshan. This is the time for Swami's bhajan. This is the time that he grants interest. Until all people around me were fed up. Why are you here? Better you go back. Therefore, my friends, I've been staying here all these years, 45 years, enjoying basking 
in his love. No regrets. No repentance. There's nothing whatsoever. But at the same time, I can tell you, my friends, it is a tough life. It is not a cakewalk. It's not walk. It's not like something like a walk. And it's not a bed of roses. It's a life of challenges. I don't want to trouble you by narrating my own hardships. No. But I had many, many innumerable pleasant moments. Today, I'm in that position, believe me or not, that I'm not able to believe certain things happened in the Divine Presence. I'm not able to believe certain of my conversations with Bhagavan, the intimate moments I had with Him. My only objective was to make Him laugh. Swami, people come to Him. Swami, people come to you with all their problems. They may bring, bring 100 problems. I am not going to be 101. No. If I don't say any problem, at least you will have one less of a problem brought to your attention. So I never wrote any letter. I never complained against anybody. Yes. There are many, many situations that forced me to take up to this sort of postal sadhana or writing letters to him. That I never resorted to that. I accepted this as a kind of challenge. By his divine grace only, I could survive. Actually speaking, I was trying to avoid this assignment given to me by Baba. Why? I know how difficult it is to live with him. Rama Brahman, the caretaker of Vrindavan, Bangalore, Whitefield, he knows me very intimately. On the very first day when, joined, when I joined there, you know what he said? The first thing he said was, Anil Kumar, be ready that you may be kicked out any day. The first day. That's what he told me. Second thing he said was, be ready to leave this place and I'm in charge to see that you'll be out of this place. That's what he said. And further he said, then I said, sir, when Swami asked me to go, what should I do? He said, never go. When Swami asked me to go, and you say, never go. He said, when he said, when he says, go, you go. But you wait at the gate. He will call you. He will call you by the evening. That's all what he said. In fact, those are the, the uh, Rama Brahman, Dasya Sutras, 10 principles. What he said sustained me for long, till this day. Kept me in good spirit till this day. Face all challenges and be brave and courageous in all situations of frustration, depression and disappointment. I'll give you a few of the incidents which I cannot forget in my life. Impossible. What happened was, Sir, Swami was looking at a plan of the construction of the canteen today and also another plan, the construction of the hospital, super speciality hospital. These two plans are brought and kept in front of him. Late Ramakrishna, the director of LNT company, was explaining to Swami. Swami, this is what plan is of this canteen. You'll have a kitchen here. You'll number of seats here. They were explaining all that. I was just watching the situation. At one moment, Swami said, Ramakrishna, you are all international engineers. You are of international repute. But in my opinion, why can't you change your plan like this? If you do this way, you'll be able to complete very fast. And you will also save so much of material. Why don't you think this direction? And the witness immediately that Ramakrishna, director of LNG, fell at his feet, Swami. This idea did not strike. 
you are a really great Swami. Swami simply laughed and gave and looked at me with a mischievous smile. After Ramakrishna left, I asked Swami softly, Swami, you are telling him all the engineering details to that internationally reputed engineer. It is not ordinary, Swami. I repeat, it is not ordinary. You know what Baba said? Please note this. So you are thinking that Swami is ordinary till now. Is that your is that your feeling that I'm ordinary? Well, yes. I started trembling. Well, the body was shivering because I was just taking in a casual way. When he has put this question, you are thinking of Swami ordinary. Do you think so? Swami, I'm sorry, Swami. Excellent. I tell you, these are the moments that made me realize that he is an engineer of engineers. In those days, we had Dr. Al Reza from Bombay, who was a superintendent of such a size general hospital for decades. I know him very intimately. Dr. Al Reza is a doctor of par excellence. He is a devotee. And we don't, I have not come across a devotee of the caliber of Dr. Altesa, such a great man, with a total spirit of surrender. When he starts speaking of Swami Arshiridi Bhagwan, you find tears rolling on his face. He has no, no other talk other than Swami Shirdi and Bharti Swami, that's all. And he used to walk to his interview room every day. I had the unique chance of dining with Swami, joining him at the lunch time at the dining table for about five to six years. Every day I used to go there inside. I saw a Reza coming in every day. But I was curious to know why should a doctor come here every day? Why? Is it to check Swami? Is it health checkup or what? What business has it to come here? And my doubt. Is follow what happened. Comes to close to Swami with a list. Swami, these are the patients. And this patient is suffering from malaria. Swami says, No, 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 you're wrong. He's suffering from influenza. Swami, this patient needs a surgery. No, 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 no. He would treat it. Minister, that is happening. He was correcting their diagnosis. He was also telling them who requires surgery and who is just medication is enough as a cure. I was just looking at the statement. Then he said, Yeah, my atlas was down now. What is it you are looking at? Some you are correcting doctor. Antena, yeah, I know. Yes, it's like that, I know. And then he said, I used to tell the same thing to Sita Ramaya, Dr. Sita Ramaya, the first. Super in a such type of is a doctor of doctors. I can also tell you another thing. We had one great devotee by name Adi Keshav Naidu, member of the parliament, hailing from Chitor. He was mainly responsible for the construction of Srinivasa guest house to the left side of Ganesh Gate. He, he had also his contribution. Um, in the construction of that uh, structure site in your state, a great devotee. Well, he came, just came to our super specialty office. At that time, Dr. Olady Chaudhary was the director of that office. He too hailed from Chitor. And Adikeshwar Naidu and Olady Chaudhary happened to be classmates. He wanted to just say hello to Chaudhary. And he got into his chamber and conversing with him, incidentally said, Dr. Chaudhary, why don't you check up my blood pressure, BP? This is a matter of fun. He checked his BP and said, Adi Keshavu, you can't go home. It is time that you get admitted to hospital. Go inside, lie down on bed. You can't go. 
high blood pressure. Then immediately tests were done and the sugar also was so high, highly diabetic. He said, you are admitted now. And he said, you have to be operated tomorrow. What is to be done? And the news was conveyed to Swami. Swami Adi Keshav is to be operated tomorrow. Swami said, yes, go ahead. Then what happened? That day of surgery, he was lying on bed and surgery was about to be stopped. As you all know, they will do final test. The sugar levels and the blood pressure. When the taking readings of both, they are very, very high. And he is not fit for any surgery. It will be, they will be taking a risk if they operate. Immediately, they came and reported to Swami, the sugar levels and BP are very high. It's not possible to operate, that is postpone, postpone your future day. Swami said, no, 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 I'm coming there. You get it done today. Swami went there. Swami was sitting there. And then, come on, Swami said, come on, do. Proceed with your surgery. They did it, it was thumping success, great success. When superficiality doctors hesitated to operate or not, here we have Vaijo Narayano Hanvantari himself, the doctor of doctors, telling them, yes, I want you to do it. Nothing happened to him. That's what it is. So I saw him as an engineer of engineers. I also witnessed Baba as the doctor of doctors. And then I can also tell you, it was in the Hillview Stadium. During one of the convocation addresses, Dr. Sundaresham, a director of an international institute in India, he happened to be the chief guest. He gave the talk, convocation address, and Swami gave his discourse. I translated, but at the end of the talk, I went close to Swami and said, Swami, you helped me to translate, but to be honest enough, I did not understand single word what to say, because it was full of scientific technical terms. You were speaking of space sciences, you were speaking of all electronics, all technology, Well, I didn't understand anything. Do you know what Baba said? The chief guest today is an international scientist. And along with him, many scientists came here today. Let them also know that Baba is a super scientist. Baba is a super scientist. I'm a witness. But they were all thrilled and excited. And Bhagavan addressed scientists, Baba Atomic Research Institute in Bombay. All the scientists appreciated his talk like a so, he is a scientist of scientists, engineer of engineers, doctor of doctors. Next time I mention to you, Swami took classes for MBA boys for one full year because I followed him to translate his talk and he was speaking about marketing, a leadership, whatnot, all aspects. Business management. He was speaking like that. A book also was published containing Swami's talks on management. He was referring to those of the Western people, quoting them the way how they looked at this important field of today, the business management. And at the end of the talk, he gives a beautiful smile, looks at me virtuously, and says, How do you like it? Swami, I like it for the simple reason, it is your talk. But I cannot get involved because I am not student of management, I am student of bioscience. I am solved. That's what he said. He is a teacher of teachers. The way how he explains, point after point, the anecdotes, excellent storyteller, creating, infusing 
the spirit of interest in you. Because as we see some of the people, they speak in such a boring way that we don't want to hear any more discourse on spirituality. But spirituality becomes a matter of great interest. He involves all of us and addresses everybody. A teacher of teachers. Wonderful explanation. I'll give a simple example. As is the cloud, so is the rain. As is the floor, so is the bread. As is the action, so is the reaction. As is the seed, so is the tree. That's how he starts giving number of examples, action and reaction, one after one. And the logical, the scientific, sequential order in each he mentions is this. The food that we partake, is responsible for our mind and its thoughts. And thoughts lead to all kinds of activities, karmas, or doings, or actions. And they bear fruits, results, karma phala. And they may be good or bad, depending upon our actions. In other words, the food, mind, thought, action, and the result. Pakka. In a mathematical way, what kind of chemistry as they speak of the equations and all that. We will be thrilled how he developed this. Because with this experience and long life I spent at my native place, I heard many scholars, many, many scholars. But I tell you, after returning home, if anybody asked, what did you hear? Except in keeping quiet, I could not hear. But when you listen to Swami, you will remember whatever he said. For a lifetime, he's a teacher of teachers. Why? And he finds some humor in subjects, see the subjects too. It's a wonder. MSc text students, MSc text physics, they were given an interview. And their professor also was there. And Swami asked, Abraham, you read just under our boys, what are you doing? Yam tech, Swami. Yam, yam tech, oh. Yam tech, oh. What is the tech? Swami, technology. Ah, technology. Is that so? Yam technology. What is technology? He asked my boy. He said, Swami, applied science is technology. No. He asked somebody, what is technology? Technology is that which helps us to translate into action what all we studied in science. Science in action is technology. So everybody are helpless and Swami proved all their answers are wrong. You see what is humor in Yemra technology and technology. Technology. It is not technology. In my view, yeah, it is technology. Take knowledge. Take my knowledge. I acquired all this knowledge from these institutions. Take my knowledge for the benefit of society. That is technology. That's what Baba said. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing it is. Technology, nobody could give you that kind of definition. And I also give you. The kind of mathematics he said. Hey, bro, mathematics. Hey, hey, bro, what is mathematics? Huh? Three minus one is two. Oh, no? Is that not right? Oh, Swami, yes. No, no. Oh, no. Three minus one is one in spiritual mathematics. What, Swami? Three minus is one? Yes. Swami started explaining. Here I am. There is mirror in front of me. You find my reflection, three. I am here, the mirror, and my reflection. Now you remove the mirror. I only remain. So three minus one is one in spiritual mathematics. Finish. Allah random. Like that he finds humor in physics, in mathematics. Really wonderful, really wonderful. In bioscience, as you're explaining, he was explaining how there is Ecological imbalance today. 
the reasons for floods, the reasons for earthquakes, the reasons for ozone depletion, the causes for air pollution. He was explaining all that. We deal these subjects for postgraduate students on this branch of biology, ecology. So many points that I never read. That's Swami explained. He's a biologist. He's a physicist. He's a, a, a business manager. And literature. Wow. Oh, nobody can stand in front of him. He asked once Goka, Goka, Yemapa love and Jepo. Goka, tell what is love. Everybody is there. Woke up, such a great man, not an ordinary person, he is a person of international fame in English literature, from Oxford. There is no post that he has not occupied in the hierarchy of teaching of English at the national and international levels. He was also Gyanapit Award and also chairman of Gyanapit Award Committee, not a small man. When Swami asked him, what is love? He could not give reply immediately. Yeah, Mr. Papa, come on, tell. He didn't. He wanted some time. Because he has got a lot of information. Volume of information. The ages of knowledge. How to put it? When Swami asked, just like that, what is love? Then Swami laughed and said, Yemunda, yeah. Selflessness is love. Lovelessness is self. Selflessness is love. Lovelessness is self. He said, Swami, Abba, what a definition. He said, Goka himself, internationally known, linguist, a man of letters, a man of, of a scholarship from Oxford University, not a small man. And you can understand, Swami. Mm, he is final in every subject, in every discipline. I gave you examples, engineering, medicine, physics, mathematics, biology, and all literature. Then suddenly, I'm a witness. When Swami was talking to Vedic scholars on the dais, during the Dasara celebrations, they all get seated at that appointed place and take charge of the assignments. Each one reciting a particular portion of Vera. And Swami stands in front of one, one after another and starts listening to his Vedic chants. Suddenly he bends further. He corrects them. He tells them, You have missed these Vedic chants. What am I to say about God? What can you say about him? Is where the Purusha. And there is nothing not known to him, part of that is contained in Veda. In those days, I tell you, the greatest renowned scholar, yes, Sisla Chandravur said, Pentecost Subramanian said, Remila Surya Prakash said, not other people, followers in Sanskrit, they all bowed down in front of him. They all accepted Swami is Veda Purusha. Wow. And then it's a matter of a, a shock, a pleasant surprise to see Swami as the ultimate in all branches of knowledge, all branches of information known to mankind. Once he was talking about the planets. This is the distance from this planet to that planet. This is the distance from sun to that planet. This is the distance between moon and the sun. This went on for four to five days. Oh, you should got tired. Because we are not interested in our astronomical details. When we went for walk, some of the boys came to me, sir. All right, what do you want? Would you please change the mood of Swami? All right, what should I do? Please ask Swami to speak on his childhood. Or to speak on Bhagavata, which will be more interesting because these plan astronomy, astronomical details. Oh, Swami, one, sir, 
we complete the work here. You should help us. I said, all right, you pray that I get a chance. Every day in the afternoon, Swami comes down and then sits there on the chair and I'll go and talk to him. After five to ten minutes, he'll ask, hey boys, come down. Then boys come down. So before boys came down uh, to listen to Swami's words, I just said, Swami, he said, hey, what? Swami, you are speaking of all these planets and the distances, Swami. If you excuse me, I have got humble submission. I am a hippo. Oh, come on, tell what is there. Nothing wrong. Swami, planets existed. They are existing. They will continue to exist. The distance has been there over ages. How are we interested, Swami? We want to hear your tale. We want to hear your beautiful, unique narrations from Bhagavad Gita. Ah, Atlana. He changed the subject to Bhagavatam and childhood from that evening. From that evening. And he was describing, wow, it is as if, oh, just one second. Something disabled. Hello? Yes, sir, you can continue. You can continue, sir. Okay, because so, so certain portions appeared as if something like, some slides you saw on the screen. Slides, <laughs> okay. Now, therefore, the the kind of uh, life that I spent with Swami is a, a, is a revelation. That's so far as the knowledge, the vidya, or the jnana, speaking of Swami as the ultimate. Then coming to other fields other fields, other aspects of daily life. He just a, a mixture of both humanity and the divinity, combination of both. Yes. But what happens is being close to him for long period, we forget the divinity aspect, go away his human aspect and get identified with the name and form and take things in a casual way. There we are mistaken. It is Maya, delusion, illusion that happens necessarily for those who live very close to the divinity. All those people are Juna, Sakabama, Bhima, they were not, they were not exceptions. They're all deluded. So the greatest danger is the greatest threat is that this delusion, this illusion to which you will be. Because of proximity. He'll be talking to you so nicely. Thinking of your family, mentioning your brothers and sisters about your own personal life. Certain things that you only know that you have not revealed to anybody. Then you think, okay, you feel very happy. Take things for granted. There is one man by name Partha Sarathi from Hyderabad. Uh, he's a, a very Important man, he served here for some time as controller in our university. He's basically a physicist, and Swami asked him to join the university here. He was a several convener there at Hyderabad. Swami called Pat Sarathi, and he was about Swami was about to distribute dhotis, dhoti, you know, D H O T I, dhotis distribute to pundits, the Andhra style. So, Swami asked Parsardi to catch hold of one end and Swami was holding another end and Swami was cutting each dhoti into two because two pieces are there. And Parsardi is wondering, oh God, he wants me to hold on this end, he cuts with the scissors. Dhoti is into two, what's all this? He was just wondering. Suddenly Swami said, Parsardi, so and so, very well known to you, his son is met with an accident. Very close to you. Well, he dropped it. So he said, Swami, what happened? Don't worry. I saved him. After some time, you can go 
and talk to him on phone and you will know what all that had happened. Well, accordingly, awards are the event and runs. What happened? A person known to him for decades, a relative also, his only son met with an accident. But nothing had happened. Swami saved him. When the Pasaji mentioned this, yes, we take things Swami for granted. We take him as a human being. One Swami said, Yemra, Swami Guda Mama De Undadu, Kalu Chetru Nagada. Swami Guda Manchegadan put her Yemra, you know. Or a boy, you think Swami is also a human being, like anybody. He has got hands and legs and the neck and the head. But what about the content? What about the content? What about the divinity? You do not know, Ra, that's what he said. Therefore, however much we say that I know about Swami, whatever claims that we, have, we may have, how near we may be, how dear we may be for our decades, but yet it cannot be known. Why? Because all that is known is knowledge. All that is unknown is ignorance. And Baba is unknowable, the third dimension. Known, unknown, unknowable. He cannot be known. But to give us that pleasure, happiness, of association. He comes down to our level and just liberally grants us these miracles and experiences to cherish. This wonderful thing. And I can also narrate you certain things that happened in my life when I was in Bangalore, the early period of my life there, I was staying alone in Vrindavan, and there were no buildings in the vicinity, no bridge, nothing like that. The whole street was completely dark, not even street lights, excepting two stray mad dogs moving that side and this side. How to spend life there? And then the food of Karnataka people, well, they, they, this is a brand, brand diet. They don't make use of chilies or anything like that because. We relish only chilies what to do. Somehow it's pulling as well. Swami suddenly came from Puttaparthi and said, Anil Kumar, how are you man? I said, it's okay, so that I know. You are not eating well. And then he called one assistant by name Sanji, who was working there in Vrindavan. Swami Strayi Vrindavan. Sanji, get those two, he said. Two bottles. They are the two bottles of chilies. One is mango pick, other is the gongora, the favorite of Bukhi. And he said, you manage the two bottles, you, are not, you don't need any other things. <laughs> or am I to believe that? Lord coming down to my standard, asking the pickles to be brought for my consumption, understanding that I am not able to relish this diet without enough of chilies, which is just a bland diet. And he could understand. I can tell you, my friend, to my knowledge, I have not met anybody, the near and the dear, relatives or friends or parents or in laws or children or any. I can say this with confidence 100%. Nobody loved me, loved me as much as Baba used. Baba loved me so much. I cannot forget those moments. First time we went to Uti, along with Swami. There, Uti, what happened? I'm coming from a very hot place, blast furnace of Andhra Guntu, which is the capital of Andhra Pradesh today. Very, very hot. Very hot place. But there in Uti, Baba, a very, very cold type of night. I will be sure. Swami said, Baba, Give just some, uh, have your dinner. I had my dinner and said, Swami, Swami said, that is your room. That is your room. You sleep there. I went there, lie down on bed, but still shower. After 10 minutes, Swami comes to my room and says, ah, you need a blanket. He brought the blanket. 
one day when that was not sufficient. I was still showering. After 10 minutes, Swami comes back. Call one by right. Put the heater here. This fellow is not able to bear this cold season. And they kept some heater. Still. Then finally, after half an hour, Swami comes. Anil Kumar is my personal shop. It is very soft that I use it. Hmm? It is a biscuit cup. On that, we have got the picture of a deer and also a big tree beautifully uh, on that uh, shop. Swami said, come on, you lie down. And Swami just put up to the neck. Ah, you are covered. You are safe now. In Bagunda, is it nice? Is it warm enough? Good night, sir. Tell me who will love you. Who will love you then? Who will care for you that much? What is worth of it? What position in this world would equal to that love? What property in this world would match his love? That is love. Unconditional. Unconditional love. Wow, wow. I remember this very, very pleasant moment. I am also tell you that we had been to Delhi and uh, uh, the Delhi Swami stayed there for 10, 10 days. Well, they were serving food. Uh, it's the same problem for me because I need hot stuff. But they are serving so many items, but I could not relish them. Swami was sitting just in front of me, just asking. You have nothing to eat. And Swami came on chair slowly, such a gently chair, and the chair stopped there, close by my side. Swami said, Yemaya Bhavunda, how do you like the food? Swami, items are many. Tasty said Swami. Then he called it straight. Right. Oh, Mirchi dalo. Huh? Let it be hot. And then the statement. Tarts are pointing to tell me before. Swami made this. I don't worry because Swami asked like that. What to do? And next day what happened? At the dining table. Swami said, I want to come here. You know what happened yesterday? I sent a word to Hyderabad. Two bottles of pickles sir. Just not Aircraft transported these two pieces for us. Who will do that? Airlifted two bottles of pickles. Uh, sometimes I feel, uh, have they happened? Is that all true? Am I to believe that? Who will believe all this? Because I'm not able to believe it to have happened. Because they are such unbelievable. Unbelievable incidents in my life. Miracles happened in my life. And sweet, wonderful conversation full of jokes is what happened. I can tell you this one day, Mr. Challenger Rao, who spent about 32 years in the divine presence of Swami, holding important portfolios. One day when we came out of Ponchala, I told you, after finishing our lunch, Chiranjira said, What Anil Kumar? I never saw Swami laughing so much. But as he talks to you, he laughs. Why? Sir, answer is simple. You are an administrator. You have got certain tasks. You have got certain duties to do, attend. And when you do those duties, Swami will scold you and say, You can do much better than this. When you don't do, he will scold you. When spoil you, when you spoil, then you get on the lot. Yes. Whereas in my case, I have no duties to perform. I have no responsibilities. So there's nothing to scold me. But the only duty I have is to make my lot happy. To make my Bhagwan smile. I want to make my Bhagwan smile. Happy. happy. So all we'll enjoy is beautiful smile. That has been my task. That has been my duty all along. Even I believe that we talked about some politics also. 
and Swami came out and said, Anil Kumar, you seem to be interested in politics. Why don't you go to Madras and contest the election? Go to Jai Lalita and contest the election. I said, Swami, how can I go there? He needs some suitcases of cash. Who will give me party ticket to contest the election? I think that is not answer I expected from you. So if you have money, you go to politics, right? No. He said, Swami, I am not interested. Oh, sorry, that's right. <laughs> like that, in politics, we need to discuss. So, nice. after every discourse, at the end of the translation, at the end of the talk, either in Purnachandra Auditorium or Sai Purnachal, he will call me at the end of the talk. Are, how do you like the talk? Anyway, he put the Swami open as a Bagundana, Bagundana, Abba Swami. Excellent, what am I going to say? If not your talk, what else could be better than this? Anything cannot be straighter than your touch. I am what you found out. I you say something. Then you have to say something what you like in this talk. Immediately, I start mentioning highlights of his discourse delivered just a moment ago. Then he is excited. He sits on the chair and again he explains every point. Of that. How am I to think? In other words, I heard his talk twice, one in the auditorium, another in the green interview, clarifying all the clarity. That's why, really, oh, I am not able to believe those things to have happened in my life as translator. And people say, Anukumar, you translated Swami's talks for 23 years, the maximum number of talks. Well, I am not able to believe the basic truth I am telling you, my friends. I am not from any convent. I am not from, from any uh, signing school or central school. Uh, nothing of that sort. I am not from Madras or Hyderabad or Bombay or Delhi. I am not from any metropolis city. I am from a town by name. I had my studies in Telugu medium up to my high school level. Started English medium only after coming to the college. And he picked up that fellow from a Mafsul town who had his studies in Telugu medium to translate his Telugu talks into English for 23 long years. The power of science, with the glory of science, with the will of science. That's all. I am nobody. Sometimes when, when I listen to those, some of the cassettes, incidentally, I also listen just as you would listen. Oh, is it so? Uh -huh. That's all. I am also a listener to my own translation. That's all. Because certain of the words that would not strike to my mind, some of them just appear. They just came out of my mouth. Basically, I am a student of botany. I am not a student of literature. All how I speak, I don't know. How I use those words, I don't know. People ask me, Anil Kumar, oh, translate fantastic. Is that so? Because I am only a witness to all that that has been happening. I never felt that I am a participant. I never felt that I am a doer. No. It just happened like that. Just happened like that. Happenings or divine doings are human in my life. But all that I had in the company of Swami, in the immediate presence of Swami, they are all happenings and they are not the doings. They are never the doings. I would also tell you another thing. I think that year, Jayamma, the warden of Anantapur campus, Pushpa Madam, the librarian of Anantapur campus. And then Purna Madam served as principal biologist. Sai Lila, English department. Some from Anantapur came there to Kodaikanal. And some lecturers, some VIPs, all India president, international president, all, all. they were all there. In front of everybody, 
Swami has put this question. Anil Kumar, you translate Swami's speeches. J.M. Ma also translates speeches. Tell me who translates better than the other. Anaya Chestuni, Niva Chestuma, Yur Baba Chestuma Sustama. Who translates better than the other? What am I to say? Shall I say I am hopeless? Then we say, all right, pack up your luggage and go back. Shall I say I am competent? Then we say, how do you know? <coughs> in either way, talking on the rest, razor side, in front of everybody. Then I said, son, my submission is this. Jeremiah is from Madras. Madras is a cert, is a, a seat of learning in English literature. All over the country, the Madras products are number one in English literature. The standard is very high. Ah, that's what he said. That's what. How do you know this? My mother is from Queen Mary's Path in Madras. She was a gold medalist in English literature. So I mean, whenever I tell anybody she's MA in English, she used to call me back, tell them from Madras. That's something special. Is the seat of center of English literature and learning. That you know, Roshin was session, that was Somalia, great scholars. Ah, but Ijipoya, you tell me this between you and JMA. Then I said, Swami, JMA is from the class. I am from Google. She had her studies in English language. Post-graduation in English literature, doctorate in English literature, the two under B.K. Goka. Very J.M. I'm, I'm just a nobody in front of her. I'm nobody, Swami. What am I? Where, where is the comparison? You believe me, our students and the staff, who were there at that time, they were all the witnesses. You know what Baba said? New Salapa Naku, you are enough for me. If I am able to translate this, Rindu Rindu lectures of that. Swami lecture, translate lecture. If she also translates, that will be another lecture. Swami's lecture and Jayama's lecture. No, no, no. Naku no Zale, you are enough for me. What Baba said. In fact, my friends, to take us to the peaks of life, to take us to the state of excellence, is only in the hands of Swami. Nobody can take you to those heights, to the peaks of life, is only Swami. That's what I think. Everywhere, everywhere, recognition. Because as I relax and sit, very difficult for me to accept that I wrote about 40 favorites. Or is it true? That I visited around 58 countries, is that true? I'm not sure. All this happened something like that. All these things. Why? It's only because of Bhagavan Sri Sachapa. Let me also tell you one personal secret. I came here when I was 46 years old. Having served in AC College, my alma mater, for 26 years. And then I was using only bicycle all these years. But after coming to Swami, nothing less than aircraft. No scooter, no car, nothing doing only aircraft. What a promotion it is. Direct promotion from land to the air, that's all. Wow. What is all this, Swami? You are simply. I feel deeply touched and emotional, the kind of love that he showed, and the sort of recognition that he gave, to me. and the position he gave in the sight of all devotees, but not the not position in worldly sense by giving me some post of responsibility. No. How am I to believe that wife by asking me, Anil Kumarji, when will Swami come down? Then we were in Delhi. Vajipai asks me when Swami is expected. But what am I after? I don't think even local revenue officer will talk to me. 
This is because of Swami. The Prime Minister has asked me. I could not have. And then when Abdul Kalam came here and gave the connotation address, he was telling Swami, Swami, Alikumar translation, very good translation, Swami, like it. Uh, heart is beating. Because in Swami's discourse to follow, he may sing few songs, impossible for me to translate. Then I had to request Kalam, such a This is calm down. See, can you expect the President of India to speak about it? Anything, anything, any achievement, attainment, they are all given, not obtained. They are all showered on you because the missing things is not your effort. So it is effortless. Yes. Just. But from my side, I can tell you, I never had any expectations. I never had any complaints. I never gave him any letter of complaint. Though I had terrible problems. Yes, I mean, he's the common man, a householder. There are many, many things that happened in life. But I don't know the time given to me. I'm also afraid that I may talk to you the whole night, making it Shivaratri. Let me know uh, how long I can speak further from now on. You can speak another 15 minutes, up to 8.45. Oh, 15 minutes? Yes. You are quite good and liberal. Thank you. Because we college teachers, we give them warning bell five minutes before <laughs> for the submission of their scripts. Okay. And now, in retrospect, personally speaking, at my personal level, I can tell you, my friends, my mother was given an interview, and uh, Swami said, yeah, ma chip, chip. and many people were called for interview. In all humility, I say, she was the only lady uh, who sat on the chair. Swami asked her to sit with her, and all were seated. It was the first time that she met him. And Swami started speaking about her. You know, he's an Alimpa's mother. He's from Cross University. He's a gold university, gold medalist. They're very strict lady. This fellow is like that because of him. He's nothing in front of her. He went on aging at the streets. And being mother, I was also very, very happy about it. Then he asked, Amma, do you have any questions, sir? Do you have any questions you ask me? And then she said, Swami, I have no problem, Swami. This Anil Kumar is my problem. Huh? You have Anil Kumar problem. M.J. Chadwadu, is he a problem? What is that he has done? No, Swami. My eldest son is a chief accounts officer in Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Bangalore. My youngest son is a big professor at all in the Medical Sciences, professor in mythology. My son in law is a director. Of initial technology, whereas this fellow ended up his career simply as a lecturer in Andhra Christian College. This is the disappointment, Swami. Apart from that, he just stopped offering private tuitions to everybody. He stopped giving lectures in federal colleges. He stopped uh, valuing scripts. He just goes on giving lectures on Swami, goes on moving from village to village, gets up in the morning, says, Sai Baba, Sai Baba. He has got three daughters and a son, Swami. How is he going to get them married? We don't have any property. This is my concern. I am speaking to you, Swami's picture in front of me. You know what Baba said? Yeah, ma, Sai Baba, Sai Baba. And Sai Baba and the Tamas and Baba. Why do you say Sai Baba? Sai Baba? Do you think Sai Baba is so cheap? No. Now I am telling you. As many people that know me will also know your son. Is it here? 
all those people that know me will know your son also. And second statement is said, since he has been doing my work, leaving everything, it is my duty to do his work much better than what you have done for himself. He kept to his promise and he did everything, everything in the family. For his father, and then oh, oh he showered many many gifts to her. Gave her diamond ring, or diamond necklace, the diamond bangles. Oh, and in addition to that, gave her silk sari. He said, "Why, Swami? This sari I am giving you because you have given Anil Kumar to me." He said, "That's very wonderful." I happily recall those pleasant moments, that wonderful association. Now, my friends, I come to the other aspect. We are all devotees of Bhagwan, and this is Aradhana day. What do you mean by Aradhana? Aradhana is adoration. It is not puja worship. No, it is Aradhana, adoration, hero worship. Yes. Aradhana day meaning adoration. Hero worship. Yes. I adore Swami. At this moment, I recall what Swami said on one of the occasions of Sri Rama Navami. This is statement he said. Celebration of Sri Rama Navami is not a mere celebration. It's not enough if you wear new dresses. And decorate the whole hall and have special cookies at home. That is no celebration at all. Celebration of birthday of Sri Ram. Sri Ram Naomi, meaning you should follow his life. Adherence to truth, such a vakya paripala. And then upholding dharma, dharma charan. Ekapatni, holding on to only one arrow. Ekabana, only one arrow to finish off any enemy. The qualities of Sri Ramachandra is compassion, is love. If you have those qualities, that is true worship of Lord Rama. True worship of Lord Rama is not with the flowers that we pluck from the trees and the plants. When you pluck the flowers and offer to Sri Rama, the punya will go to the plants, not to you. Because the flowers belong to those plants, not to you. You have not produced those flowers. The real adoration, meaning we adore Bhagavan, your qualities. Your qualities of unconditional love, your qualities of equality, your qualities of equanimity, your qualities of supreme sacrifice that you gave your life for your devotees, your mission for the emancipation of mankind, your determination to establish congregation of worship and unity of faiths, you alone could do. After all, he began his life as one individual, hailing from a hamlet with hundred inhabitants, with no roads, with no lights, with no schools, no hospitals. They didn't have enough food to eat. The poorest of the poor, they ate only ragi, the finger milks. From such a family, poorest of the poor, and he's become the king of kings today. The king of kings today. No support from any political party. No support from any top economists or industries. No support from anybody. That's come up all by himself. That is the divinity of Bhagavan, which I want you to, to note. Though you know it is time to recall, recapitulate. And now what happened? You just read his life. It has two things, two aspects. One, demonstration. Demonstration. And two, instruction. Demonstration, how to be obedient to your parents. How to love your family. How to love your community. How to help the society. It is all a demonstration. On the other hand, instruction. Is missing. And we find both being one ultimately when he says, My life is my 
message. Life is the demonstration. If you want to know to be how to be an ideal son, ideal grandson, yes, you should learn from Swami. I heard many anecdotes relating to his childhood. We'll have another opportunity. I don't think the Siddharth will put a full stop to this meeting. I think it's only a, a comma for the coming many, not a full stop. And he mentions all his childhood days, how he served his uh, grandfather, how he fetched the pots of water from the river, both morning and evening, all by himself, cooking at home, serving food to his grandfather and studying. What a kind of hardship he had, tough life he had. It is a demonstration. Things are not simply easily given like that. Nobody can declare, I am God like that. No. It is Godhead. It is Jesus who became Christ later. Dasharad Rama has risen to the level of Atma Rama, the Lord of the soul, the Lord of the spirit. So Swami, from ordinary life, has been extraordinary. That's great. It only means to know that it's a long life. And do this four decades and a half of life. He has established himself that is divine. After the entire uh, world of side devotees are convinced and experienced with devotees, then he started. It's not a question of giving talks just like that. No, he established the unit that he is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Then whatever he said is Veda. Whatever he said is Upanishad because of his establishment as Veda. Therefore, he is an example to everybody. Nobody can declare that he is divine unless you experience the divinity within. Unless it is quite cognizable, apparent to everybody all around in the community, not till then. And Baba, what is so silent? It is a silent spiritual revolution, silent spiritual revolution. Therefore, my friends, we as Sai devotees, with folded hands, I appeal to everybody. That is our duty to spread Sai message everywhere. It is not the positions that we hold that are important. Positions are no positions at all. It is a question of your contribution. Contribution two-dimensional. Spreading his message, participating in his mission. Mission and message are the two eyes of Bhagavan's research. So, with this commitment, we should spread his message everywhere. And today, we have the new generation that has not been exposed to Swami. Most of the people have not seen his physical form. If you go on narrating your experiences and stories like that, you will not be able to impress. The courtesy in etiquette may make them silent, but in it. Their hearts, they begin to question every episode because they have not seen him, they have not experienced him. Experiences are individual, while well, message is universal. Krishna's miracles, divine sport, leelas may not be accepted by everybody, but Bhagavad Gita is universal accepted. It is a textbook of all time. Therefore, Swami's message is most precious. We, the educated people, the alumni and the professionals and Balavika's teachers, everybody should do research. What? Uh, supposing I give some example. What does he say about family life? What does he say about your personal life? What does he say about the political life? What does he say about Interrelationships. What does he say? How to bear criticism? What does he say? How not to feel proud? These are all the things, different subjects. 
Therefore, as we read Sai literature, we should classify like that. What did he say in this moment? What is Swami teaching in this effort? So we will be ready with that answer. I'll give one example. We have been to one place by name Bhadravati in the state of Karnataka for a youth conference. About 3,000 youth attended. And Mr. Ratnakar also was the chief guest then. At that time, well, I spoke and I too have spoken because my purpose of my visit was that. Then they invited another man by name, Meenan, from Kerala, very young man. What a fiery speech he gave. He is a, a BJP man, well read in Vivekananda and Paramahamsa literature. Well, so long Anil Kumar is alive, he will not allow anybody overtake Swami. Swami should be number one. Anybody should be next. Sitting on the diocese, noting all the points. The and then without the permission of the chair, I got up. In anticipation of your permission, Mr. Chairman, I would like to add these remarks. Praising this mean on one side, I was mentioning all the points you mentioned and what Swami has to say on each of the points, ultimate, that's all. And uh, the first people to clap. At the end of the talk, that fellow that came and fell at my feet and said, I would like to visit the chapter. Then I thought, my visit is full. We should present that way. The Swami is the ultimate. Swami is best. Unprecedented. Unparalleled. Irresistible. That kind of conviction. That kind of determination we should have. We need messengers of this time. Missionaries of this time. Everyone should be a missionary. And a visionary. Yes. We should train our children. I know most of you are married, you know, your children are coming up. See that they are put in Balavikas. If you have grown up children, see that they are in Shavada. So that you'll have somebody to talk to you in your advanced age. Somebody to take care of you when you are aged. We find a lot of difference between children of Sai and the children from other walks of life. There's a cultural difference from the students of Sai and from the students from the rest of the world. So that uniqueness, that special, that quality, I want all of you to maintain, uphold the Sai's mission and see his glory. The flag of such organization flies high in the committee of nations. I thank you very much for your kind invitation. I repeat once again. Mr. Siddharth in particular, and I give them of education human rights from Prashantalayam for their contribution, for their participation, for all the arrangements they have made for making this possible. Thank you very much for your time. May Bhagavan bless you. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh, I hope I am audible. Why not? Okay, great. So, uh, there are a few questions. In fact, there are a barrage of questions uh, that we see on the chat panel. It's like a flood uh, of a river. I mean, the way it is coming. But uh, for want of time, I'll be picking up maybe three questions which are probably very pressing and must be ringing in the minds of many people. Mm -hmm. uh, first question is, uh, am I unlucky that I came to Baba after Baba left his mortal body? Oh, oh good. So, am I unlucky? Yes. Let me answer this. Then you can go to some other question. Sure, sure, sure. It's not the question of who comes first, who came late. It's not a question of early or late. It's not a question of time. Why one might have come long back, but what do you use? No change. Swami gives this example. Bus stops on the road. All people get in. All people rush. 
to occupy the seats. People with muscle power are the first people to occupy. The first to see by the side of the driver. A weakling will take the seat there very close to the door. But when this bus stops at the destination, who gets down? The man standing near the door is the first man to get up. Not the fellow who was sitting by the side of the driver. So you cannot say, I came long back, I came later. No oh, seniority, nothing. The sincerity that matters, the commitment that matters, the fathomless depth of devotion that matters, the profundity, authority, the authenticity, the credibility of your as Sanjay society that matter and not when or after doesn't matter. Today, people are Brahma's devotees. Have they seen them? Krishna devotees, have they met him? Christ followers, have they seen? No, because God is both seen and unseen. Seen is Vyakta, unseen is Avyakta. So, Vyakta is a physical form of Vyakta. It's a spirit behind it. Therefore, on the other hand, you are so genuine, you will appear in your dreams. He will guide you. As you read his books, you will find answers to your questions. As you look at his photograph, you will find peace and solace and comfort. So, Baba is ever present, is eternal, is immortal, totally spiritual, 100% Divine. That's what I can say about it. In fact, connect, yes. yeah, connected to this, a lot of people are writing on the chat panel that a uh, lot of people have experienced Swami this moment uh, throughout last one and a half hours uh, as you were narrating experiences. So I think people who have apparently haven't seen Swami in physical form have also experienced this moment on this holy day. So, thank you, thank you. Can we have my sincere thanks to everybody? Yeah, sure. So, uh, next question is uh, after uh, achieving, I mean, after Mahasamadhi, Samadhi, uh, you know, any experiences that you have, uh, you know, kind of uh, got an opportunity, uh, you know, regarding Swami, means after the Mahasamadhi, Samadhi, last uh, nine years or so, any experiences that you have, you know, gone through? Any you okay, I'll, give you one, I'll give you an example. I had been to Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, I went with my all my baggage, went to the airport, and the luggage has been checked checked in. I went with my passport to the immigration counter. There, the immigration officer opened the passport and found out to his utter dismay on the last page of the passport. One number is written at the bottom on the scroll. Another number is written. there is a the number at the bottom refers to some Muslim. He said, Anil Kumar, another Muslim. Yes, has the same number. You cannot go now. I said, sir, the luggage is already checked in. It will be checked out. No problem. No problem. I said, tomorrow I have got to speak there, sir. Many thousands with the assembly know the question. I said, sir, what is the worst thing that could happen? They will be put in jail at work. He said, no, no, he will be deported. He will be deported. He will be sent back by the return flight. Mm. Then, sir, I had the question, can I make a phone call from here? He said, no. That's for official purpose. I treated with him repeatedly, repeatedly, appealingly, prayerfully, most humbly. Some of his heart melted. All right, you make a call. I made a call straight to the chairman of the center. Now he's in charge of all Eastern countries. By the name Manus Kumar Singh. I called him on phone. He said, don't worry Anil Kumar, give the phone to the immigration officer. He gave it. And Manus Kumar Singh told to that officer, send him. Other things will take up. I went to Bangkok and stood there. In the line for the immigration stamp, but heartbeat increased, legs were trembling, 
voice was fumbling. What am I to do? That to a lady officer was there. Ladies are very strict in any capacity, at home or outside. <laughs> I know that you would not let me go. Believe me, when I was very close to the counter, one big officer came with a blue suit, white shirt, blue tie, a star some that, quite handsome man. He saw me from a distance and came. And he has got his badge, United Nations Organization. He came and said, Are you Mr. Anil Kumar? Yes, sir. You seem to have some problem. Yes, sir. This is the problem. You just keep going. We'll take care of it. Then he said, Don't stand in the queue. Follow me. I just accompanied him. Just came. Just came out like that. Others that have been deported. He said, Happened. After Samadhi, this had happened after Samadhi. Like this, in my, during my trips abroad, many such, such things have happened. Therefore, Maha Samadhi may be the disappearance of the physical body, but reappearance of the divine power, reappearance of the divine majesty mag is so purposeful, is that inscrutable. Will. Why not on that? When we go to Samadhi and bow down our head there, put our forehead right there, you feel the vibrations. Same as you get in Shirdi. Same as you get in Buddha Gaya. Same as you get in Amritsar Gurdwara. You have same feelings when you just touch Maha Samadhi. Maha Samadhi is the holy place. Sanctum Sanctorum. It is a charger. Yes. After all, when one cell in our body and a cell phone we have needs charger, one cell phone. Millions of cells are in our body. How many charges we need? Only one charge, Mahasamadhi. That will give you enough of charge to make any number of calls, infinite number of calls, until you make your next visit. This has been my experience of many devotees come and tell me. Is that okay? Absolutely. Um, uh, the third question and probably the last question for this evening is uh, in this current situation of COVID-19 era, uh, you know, how do we kind of spend our time thinking about Swami or what do we do? What is your advice in this kind of situation? My friends, I am not given to any pride so far as on today. I am not jealous as on today because I know my own limitations. But I can tell you what I have been doing presently. SaiWisdom.com SaiWisdom.com will be covering all my talks. I also formed three groups. Prashanti Sandesh groups. And every Sunday I speak on Swami's experiences. Every Thursday, Swami's message. These are sent to all these three Prashanti groups. And these talks are circulated all over the Tamil Nadu. These talks are circulated all over Telangana. Why I say that? Is not to blow my trumpet. I'm nobody. And it's also this is not the age or the stage for me to have all these claims. No, no. The necessity makes me to tell you all this. I gave a talk just the last Thursday. Corona message. The title is this Corona message. Maximum number of people listen to the talk. There I said, this Corona period, where we are just at home, that's all under the name of lockdown. It's not a curse. It's a boon. Why? Those people who want to loiter like that, like a vagabond, those who want to just move about like that, who want to spend their time in gossip, useless, vain talk, this lockdown may be a house arrest. To me, it's not like that. This lockdown is a time to read side of it. 
It's time for me to go to his literature in depth. It is time for me to contemplate, to ruminate, to ponder over, to reflect upon different aspects of his message. What does he say to professionals? What is his message to his school children? What does he speak of for nations? What are his views on Islam? What are his views on Sikhism? What does he speak on Buddhism? These are the subjects in which I am interested. We should project Swami as an emancipator, as a pioneer, as a champion, as a leader who fought through his life for the unity of religions. So this lockdown period is for study of five literature in depth. Lockdown period is a time to listen to his budgets. It is a time to sing his budgets. It is time to spend time with children and the family members sharing our experiences. Then you'll be more busy than other ones. So lockdown period is a period of sadhana. It is a boon. It is not a curse at all. For those people who just don't have any other thing other than silly methods of life, but to us, this is very, very first time. I completed reading four books within this time. It is a really wonder because I have got enough of time to read now, more time than before. Therefore, my friends, do it something like that. And also, on the Saradhana day, let me question myself, Swami, you did so much to me. What am, what am I doing? If I go on telling everybody, Swami did to me, Swami made my grandmother, dying grandmother, back to life. Swami made me totally declare death back to life. Okay. We are bored with them. Now we want to know what you are doing for his mission. What is your participation in the divine mission? Because Baba has got his mission also. We should stand as exemplars, as ideal, as epitome of his message. Everybody should say, here is a man of service because of influence of Sai Baba. Here is an excellent expert in his field because he is a devotee of Sai Baba. The state of excellence we should reach. That is my prayer submission to everybody that we should live up to his expectations rather than simply declare these are my experiences. Swami appeared my dream. So what? So what? Swami gave me this thing. So what? Then what? Please speak of transformation that has brought in your life. Please speak of your contribution to Swami and his organization. Your service to your countrymen. These are things that matter. So let this Aradhana day, the day of adoration, be a day of commitment, be a day of prayerfulness, be a day of gratitude, be a day of thankfulness. Thank you very, very much.